Hey, what's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here and the one and only Lane Bolin coming what's at you on? again with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. And today we're going to be talking about something I know any mortgage professional with an ounce of ambition is thinking about right now. And frankly, many of you are immersed in this pressing thought, and that is how to get yours and make the most of this mortgage gold rush before it ends. Before the door slams shut, and we may never see another opportunity like this in our lifetime, friends, in terms of these crazy, crazy rock bottom low rates and the opportunity to seize not only the refi market, but also position yourself perfectly to prosper in the purchase market. So that's what we're going to be talking about today is what's the mindset behind that? What's the strategy and the tactic behind that? And how can you zig while everyone else is zagging? Because you got to be knowing right. if you're following the herd, you're going to get chewed up and spat out and left in the dust. And uh, certainly that is a general rule of success, but we want to apply it in particular to this mortgage gold rush. So this should be fun. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Let's get to it and do it. These erroneous beliefs and these erroneous presuppositions that get us in our own way, where we actually get in our own way of success. We become our own bottleneck and our own worst enemy. And welcome to being human, right? We're in the same boat. We have the same proclivity. We're no different than you guys. Uh, so there's a gravitational pull towards erroneous belief and, and uh, expectation and assumption and presumption that has us self-sabotage our success, self-sabotage our growth, our expansion, our ability to scale our business in and out of season, in and out of quote unquote good markets or bad markets or whatever. Right. We have some erroneous beliefs that have us step on landmines that are unnecessary, that have us not only uh, leave a lot of money on the table, but have us you know, really underperform on our full potential. And that's the ultimate cost. Because let's be real friends, this is not a dress rehearsal. This is a one shot deal. We got one shot called the one life we have to live and we got to make the most of it and we want to seize it and milk it for all it's worth so let's talk about that today let's kick things off with some of the ways people people are self-sabotaging their success lane you've been doing some uh, engagement in the art of mortgage marketing facebook group as of late there's yep. been some very interesting mind uh altering dendrite firing <laughs> conversation in the group let's uh get at the pulse from what you've been seeing in terms of some of the erroneous uh, assumptions, presumptions, and beliefs that are holding people back right now. Yeah, I, I, I have to start with uh, not understanding that, uh, or they, there's this erroneous belief that, uh, or your average, we'll call it the average uh, loan officer, uh, feels that he's at, at, at the result of not, not the cause of the, the circumstances. And what I mean by mm -hmm. that is- At the effect is, of, yeah. Right at the effect of, and and what I'm getting at is is that they they think that they're doing well because the market's up, and when the market goes down, they're going to go down with it. I'm like, well, yeah, with that attitude, uh, it, it you're 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 in reactive mode, brother. I mean, yeah. of course, yeah, you get, of course, you, you get, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you get what you expect, and that's where right. you know we need to inspect what we expect because if we right. expect to regress and have our business go down the toilet back to where we were pre-COVID, just relying on a meager ration of refis and primarily purchase business, because that was the market we were in a year prior to uh, you know COVID. You know, right. it was still decent rates, but it wasn't even close to where we were over the last hmm. uh, you know four to five months here. So yeah, I mean, a lot of people, they just think that's just, of course, we're going to go backwards. Of course, we're going to have to lay off staff. Of course, we're going to have to uh, you know, settle for a regression in our pipeline, a regression in our income, a regression right. in our volume and right. having to go into contraction mode. It's almost like, you know, of course, uh, spring comes after winter. Of course, we're going to have to, you know, have the light of day after night. It's almost as if like right. they just connect the dots. Like it's, it's just a, an, an absolute certainty for everybody. The question is, is it possible other people are going to position themselves not only to profit in this refi market and right. to make the most of this refi market, and instead of bringing a thimble to the ocean of opportunity in this refi market, they're bringing a freaking swimming pool, right? right. Be able to capture as much of this business as possible and maximize the moment, you know, the money moment we're in right now, but also more importantly, position themselves and hedge themselves against regression, right. stagnation, and to be able to leave the competition in the dust while everyone else is in reaction mode. 
Yep. So we've got that, you know, erroneous assumption or belief that, hey, you know, when rates go up, we're going to go down. When rates go up, our, our, our production is going to go down. But the interesting thing about it, too, I noticed is that it's almost a welcome relief. Have you noticed that? Yeah. It's like people can't wait for rates to go back up because it's like finally they can take a freaking vacation. Let's speak to that for a moment right. because there's there's some assumptions yeah. and presumptions behind that that also come with being kind of in, in the herd of mediocrity versus being in the leadership right. position. You, you know, I, I liken that to being a, 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 a one sport athlete, right? Where when your season's done, you go back inside, you know, like a, like a grizzly bear in winter and you just hang out until it's your, it's your season again. And, and you're hoping to get fat enough that you're going to survive the winter. Uh, it, not, not to mix metaphors or anything, <laughs> but you know, it, yeah, but if 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 you're a if you're a multi-sport athlete, okay, summer's over, put the surfboard away. It's fall, okay. Strap on your helmet. It's time to play football. You know, oh, it's winter now. Okay, let's put the helmet away. Let's grab our surfboard or our our, our, our snowboard. Time to go snowboarding. You right. know, oh, spring's here. Great baseball. But but what I'm trying to get at is 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 if you look at your your industry as a game, right? And 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 and, and look at and so each market market set of market conditions as as a as a different sport it's like okay sure we're in refi season right now all right what are you doing to prepare for new purchase season right and 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 furthermore back to your point of 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 you know rush 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 and get in as much as you can before it's over I'm like okay yeah when when you don't have another season that's what you have to do to survive but if you're going to thrive and dictate your calendar yeah, uh, and 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 live on your terms, not not the market's terms. You you got to be able to take whatever the market's giving you and know that it, and have a predictable floor, so you can afford to go take that vacation. You can take that time off. You're not stressed out. Like if you're stressed out right now, that's a, a number one sign, or another number one sign that you're you're an average player. It, it kind of step up and become a, a, a triathlete, you know? Yeah, and there's good stress and bad stress. I mean, if you're using the surf metaphor, right. if the surf is really kicking, there's a certain amount of healthy right. stress that, you know, has you be vigilant to get in the right position where you're not going right. to get pummeled and put your life at risk right. or put someone else's life yeah. in risk, right? <laughs> so there's, there's a certain amount of vigilance that comes with, okay, I'm in the game and I'm playing to win and this is freaking, you know, this is, you know, it's on, it's game time, right? Right. So that's more like instead of, you know, stress, it's more like I'm ready. I'm ready right. to seize the moment. I'm ready to make the most of the moment, not just get through the day, but right. get from the day. Right. It's a different right. perspective. So, you know, there's that positive stress and negative stress. The positive stress, it pumps endorphins into your bloodstream. You're jacked and stacked. You're excited. Yep. The negative stress, it's cortisol levels go way up. Adrenaline levels go way up. You're burnt out. You're having to, uh, you know, try to mitigate that or cope with that by drinking at the end of the day, and 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 you know whatever other coping mechanisms you use, droning out on Netflix or whatever, just to kind of diffuse and veg out and get yourself back yeah. into a relaxed state. But it really speaks <laughs> to, you know, there's another thing that uh, came up out of this dialogue we've had on the Facebook group recently. And that is that a lot of people they're 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 at like three hundred percent, four hundred percent, five hundred percent capacity. You know, I posted a okay. question around what percent capacity there are. And most people they're posting over one hundred percent, so they're all just super overwhelmed. They're quote unquote slammed. They're drowning. They're just trying to survive this onslaught of business, champagne problems, right? Right. right. Talk well, there's there's first world problems. Yeah, you know, and and there, there's really two ways to approach this and and turn that problem into a or turn that obstacle into a stepping stone. Either a use your windfall to set up the purchase business so that you 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 know that this is now your new floor and you know dial it down to where it's sustainable, or b add staff and again work on your new purchase business. So. <laughs> So, you, you, you know, I mean, like, of course, if you're over 100 percent capacity, this is this is not sustainable. So, you know, build capacity and and people, you know, one of the erroneous beliefs is, oh, I'll have to lay people off. I'm like, yeah, again, if 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 if, if your business is built on market conditions, yes, you will. But <laughs> anyway, I, I, I know. Yeah. You know. Oh, you make a really good point because you can either. Just go along with the market and be at the effect of and be a victim of the market. Be like that uh, proverbial dry leaf in fall right. just being tossed to and fro by the winds of life. Or yes. you can 
be the rudder and tack the sail and direct the wind where you, you know, you can't direct the wind, but you can shift the sail and the rudder to have the right. wind propel you where you want to be. Right. Many people, most people in this business, they're the leaf. They're just getting tossed wherever they're getting tossed. Yep. Or they're the rudderless, rudderless boat, if we want to use that same metaphor. And obviously, they're in a very precarious position when rates go up to get banged against the rocks because they don't right. have a game plan to pivot. They're just following the herd. So as soon as yep. rates go up, what are they doing? They're all clamoring after the same realtors. They're all yep. clamoring after the same referral partners. They're all following the herd and everyone's doing the same thing. I offer great rates, great service, throw me a bone. And yep. now these realtors are getting hammered. It was crickets yep. for six months, 12 months, 18 months. And all of a sudden- Now they're slammed. And there's an onslaught of these mortgage professionals hammering them all of a sudden, it's cold call Monday again, cold calling the same 40 freaking realtors every Monday. And it's like, how disingenuous. You dropped me like a hot potato. You wouldn't give me the time of day for the last 18 months because you didn't need me. But now that I'm the necessary evil, now you want my business? Now you care? Really? No. Is that how it's no. going to go? So, no. you know, don't tell, don't tell us we never warned you about this, guys. If you're going to no. be in reactive mode, you're about to get chewed up and spat out and be that rudderless boat getting yep. banged up against the rocks. Don't say yeah. we never warned you. And and Doran, I want to drop a bomb here. Uh, and I, you know, I, I still don't feel like we've struck at the nerve of the matter. I think the audience mm -hmm. is is intelligent enough to intellectually understand the train wreck that's coming. The reason why they're not investing in themselves is 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 they have this erroneous belief that they can't do it. That mm -hmm. it, 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 it's that fear of stretching outside the comfort zone, right? To actually build something that's going to. They're so they their identity so in, in intertwined with grinding and 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 everything being hard that the idea of 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 success coming quote easy it it, it scares the piss out of them yeah well, so let's talk about that the juxtaposition yeah. between those two mindsets those two paradigms i liken it to the practice builder versus right. the entrepreneur oh you know, man because, perfect timing <laughs> right i mean you read my mail brother because i mean at the end of the day that's the clash of mindset it's the difference right. between the practice builder who's just in reaction mode working on in their business versus on their business and right. is constantly just putting out fires has their fireman caps literally soldered to their skull and all they're doing is just scurrying around like a chicken with their head cut off all day, every day. The moment they wake up, they grab their coffee and they dive into their email. And, you know, next thing you know, five, six, seven o'clock hits. And all they're doing is just grinding, doing paperwork, dealing with loan level issues. And they wonder why they're stressed out. They wonder why they're afraid of the future. They wonder why they're concerned about having to let someone go if they were to be as bold as to hire more staff a kick-ass badass processor for example to help right. them expand their capacity their biggest fear is i don't want to have to let them go i don't want to have to hire them you know drop a bunch of dough on signing bonuses and pay them 30 right. 40 50 percent more than they were you know six months ago all of a sudden right. we're paying this overinflated rate and now I'm going to have to let them go after I train them and onboard them and everything like that, because my business is going to, you know, go to less than half or maybe even one third of what I'm doing now as soon as rates go up. Yeah, that's a that's a practice builder. An entrepreneur would look at this and be like, OK, the current market conditions, I can literally write my own paycheck. I can make as much money as I want. How? But the catch is this is only going to last another 12, 18 months. OK. So the, the real entrepreneur looks at that as like, okay, how much do I want to earn as, as the floor that's going to make me happy, right? Because we know the market's going to give that to you in refi. And so then the true entrepreneur goes out and builds that capacity to reach that level and then uses that windfall of cash to invest in the next season so that when this season dies, it's a floor for a reason. There is no basement. It's foundational level. Like if you want to make 50 Gs a month, you know, and that's going to that's going to take you 20 loans and and let's say, you know, or you know, whatever. And you need two processors to do that. You only have one. OK, good. Go out and get another. And then let's work on how to build your new purchase business practice so that it's going to fill that. It, it, it just becomes a balancing act where you're, you're every time as refi drops off, you're adding new purchase as, as refi. Uh, you know, goes up. Sorry. Get, you know, you're 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 dropping the new purchase. 
But the point is you're still maintaining those new purchase referral centers and you're still maintaining that capacity. Who cares if it's a refi or new purchase? The cool thing about this game is there's only two seasons because there's right. only one variable. It's called interest rate. So, yeah. yeah, anyway, so what I'm getting at is, is a real entrepreneur looks at this as like, okay, this is a temporary gift. How do I use this gift to make something permanent? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Reminds me of Jim Rohn's uh, metaphor of the ant. He says, we, yes. we want to be like the ant. The ant thinks winter and summer and summer and winter. So they're always ahead of the curve. So right. that, you know, in summer when it's, you know, blue sky and sunshine and lollipops, rainbows and unicorns and everything seems glorious and good. Yep. They're stocking up for the future because they know this is only going to last so long. So they're yeah. hedging against the cold winter months where they have their storehouse. And in the winter, they're thinking this ain't going to last forever. No. Now summer's going to be around the corner. So they're always ahead of the curve. And we want to yes. think like the ant. We want to yes. think like the ant that is vigilant, proactive, and preemptive versus yep. reactive and drifting. Yeah, let's do it. Um, yeah, so practice builder. I mean... What, what stops them from, you know, really stepping up in the face of this incredible opportunity to grow their, their business and, and get themselves positioned to prosper for the purchase market? What stops them from doing that? There's, there's some, you know, like we were talked about before, there's some erroneous beliefs and, and assumptions and presumptions that stop them. One of them would be, I'm just too busy, Dorn and Light. Like, I'm just too busy. I have nothing in my tank for anything else. I got no energy, no bandwidth for anything else. Right. How how would the entrepreneur uh, respond to that? How how would they contrast that kind of paradigm? Yeah, let's let, let's look at yeah, you know, let's do an analysis of of what's eating up your time, and then let's categorize that time based on what's actually producing revenue, and then let's cut out what isn't producing revenue and and double down on what is. I mean, look, <laughs> the difference between a practice builder. And an entrepreneur is a practice builder relies on 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 you know circumstance you know feelings derived from from circumstance. The entrepreneur is using analysis to create the ideal circumstance. Period. But there, and there, and I might just stack on that one more step is they're committed to a specific outcome. It may not be a a particular income where they're quote unquote happy because maybe for them just growth is happiness. It's not about right. the income. It's about the trajectory. You right. Know, it's not. It's not about the destination. It's about the direction, and right? The trajectory, having expansion and growth versus you know stagnation and regression. But they have this defiant resolve to growth, to expansion, period. And mm -hmm. so instead of getting lazy and saying, "I just have no time," and putting themselves in a box of limitation as a victim of circumstance, they defiantly commit to and defiantly resolve to expansion, knowing and having an undergirded belief that they can have it the way they want it. If yep. they don't settle, there's right. always a way to win. Winners always find a way to win. Yep. And they hold themselves and see themselves. They have an identity as a winner. They have an identity as a growth expansion creator. And yep. so because that's who they are, they live in alignment with that value and that identity. Yep. And now it's it's not a option to get lazy and turn off no. the, the power switch and say, I don't have time or I don't have the energy. It's like, no, I am a beaming source of light and right. connected to the infinite. I can create it the way I want it. Now the question is, how can I create it the way I want it? Right. Not, not whether or not it's possible, the presupposition is it is possible. And not only is it possible, it's my purpose. It's yep. not just possible, it's my purpose. And now it's like, okay, how? Knowing that's my calling and my purpose, the question is how? Yep. And better quality questions equal better quality answers. Exactly, ask better questions. 100%. So we've got this practice builder, who says, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough energy, which basically is just going the lazy route and, right. and positioning themselves as a victim, being at the effect of versus being at the cause and playing to their weakness as opposed right. to playing to their strength, being an advocate for their weakness and their lack and limitation and scarcity versus being an advocate for their unstoppableness, yep. right? So notice, guys, all this is nothing to do with circumstance. Nothing. It has everything to do with mindset. 
everything to do with perspective and paradigm. As Henry Ford once said, whether you believe you can or you can't. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> you decide. That's how powerful you are. Are you willing to own that power? Are you willing to take ownership, extreme ownership of that power? That's the difference between the practice builder and the entrepreneur at the deepest level, at the right. deepest core level. Oh, yeah. And at, at a financial perspective, the practice builder has a job. And at the end of the day, when it's time to retire, what they're going to find is uh, you know, they nobody wants to buy a job, right? Nope. Uh, as a former private equity guy, I can tell you right now, uh, your practice is only worth your database and your database is worth about one times trailing three uh, annual sales averaged over the last three years. Uh, a true entrepreneur owns a business and those businesses trade at three to five times earnings. Why? Because it's growing. Why? Because it's not reliant on you. Why? Because that entrepreneur had the right expansive mindset to build an engine that, that fueled the growth. People want to buy engines. They don't want to buy jobs, Bingo. but yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, they don't. <laughs> they don't want it. They don't want a treadmill trading time for money. No, they want a machine that sets them free. That's what they're buying. A machine right. that sets them free, not enslaves them with the office right. ball and chain. Right. They want to sign up to buy an office ball and chain. No, thank I you. don't. No, thank you. <laughs> you couldn't pay me enough to buy that shit. No, I'll, I'll leave that to some some practice builder who wants to be anchored to a job. People right. who want freedom. They're going to buy it for 10x what the practice builder would would sell their portfolio because freedom is invaluable. Yes, it's sir. Invaluable. You can't put a price tag on that freedom. But if you don't have the mindset to create that kind of a business, you're never going to create it. And if mm -hmm. you're an advocate for your weakness and your lack of limitation and scarcity, don't be surprised if you're just going to get more of the same. Like we've been talking about so many times on these podcasts. Keep doing what you've always been doing. You're going to keep getting what you've been getting. Yep. But Dorit, it's hard to find good people. But Dorit, these these uh, these people, they're getting offers all day, every day. What well, you know, it's too hard to find these people, and I'm overpaying them. And if I even if I did find them, it's 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 too difficult to train them. I don't have time to even train these people right now. Notice, you're an advocate for your weakness, your lack, limitation, and scarcity, and that's why you're frazzled and stressed and burnt out at the end of the day because that's the paradigm you're living in. What if the paradigm is, I'm an infinite source of energy. Right. And I my my goal every day, my mission every day is to pour gasoline on my energy, have routines and rituals that expand yep. my energy yep. to release and cut off anything that sucks me dry of energy. We, we call those the battery drainers. Yep. Right. And to multiply and pour gasoline on the fire, the energy expanders, the battery chargers. Right. So it's not about it's not about your finite am amount of time or money or energy. It's about if you believe that it's hard to find good people, guess what? You're going to prove yourself right. If you believe you don't have enough time, guess what? You're telling your whole neurological system the order that you have lack limitation when it comes to energy. Oh so yeah. Your whole neurological system is going to shut down and say, "He the boss says we have a lack of time and energy. We better prove him right." Yep. You know, Doran, I, I wanted to share like a, a little personal example. Uh, after 35 months in Iraq, I, I got to this practice of constantly saying to myself, I am exhausted, right? Mm. And when I got out of the army, that was my constant refrain. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. Don't get me wrong. I have this you know, superhuman discipline to just continue to execute. But my mindset was I'm exhausted. And wouldn't you know, four years out of the army, I, I put on 60 pounds and, 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 and was then physically exhausted. So it's like, you know, whatever you tell yourself, that is what you'll become. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how powerful you are. And chances are that that mantra in your mind started to manifest itself in how you are, you know, leading yourself in your daily routines. What kind of food you're eating? Chances are you're eating more carbs just yep. to kind of sedate yourself and you're yep. eating now, eating more and yep. more carbs because carbs bo boost your sugar levels and sugar yep. is somewhat of a drug. So it yep. can be a way to cope, right? So now yep. you're coping with this exhaustion with carb loading. Yep. And then now you get the insulin spike. Now, yep. of course, you have the sugar crash. Now exactly. you're even more tired and it's this downward cycle of suck. Dude, right. your body, your business, your life, it all operates by the same principles. Yeah. And I'm sure there's no one listening or watching right now that ever does emotional eating. 
they never do coping mechanisms like drink, drinking tequila or wine or other substances to try and take the edge off after a stressful day. They never eat to try and get them out of the emotional state of being fried and frazzled and stressed. This is just you and I. This is just stuff yep. we do, but no one else. Oh, does. yeah. 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 They're, they're just they're just trying to stretch their imagination of what that might be like. But most people <laughs> can't relate. <laughs> can't relate. No, no. <laughs> yeah. No. And, and Doran, I mean, that change in mindset, you'll start thinking about your business differently. And, and, the, and getting back to practice builders versus entrepreneurs. An entrepreneur looks at the problem and then look, looks at the assets that he or she has and then and then you know figures out a plan to to capitalize on that. Uh, and, and, and so what I'm getting at is, you know, for example, if your mindset was that of, you know, it was properly set, you would look at at this this refi boom like, holy crap, I need more refi. Right. In order to generate more windfall in order to build whatever it is I want to build when the season changes. And I kind of wanted to drop a, a, a value strategy bomb for the group that, uh, you know, you're getting all these refis. Well, you know, if you had some new purchase business, have you thought of feeding, you know, your, your new purchase business that's coming from out of town to a financial advisor in exchange for access to his database to market your refi, you know, your refi opportunity. So win-win for it. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. But again, yeah. That's but, 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 but hey, hey, the other guys want you to call 45, I'm sorry, 40 realtors a day. Yeah. That's the hard one. <laughs> That'll get you dropping F bombs all day long if you're afflicting yourself with that as your only way to grow your business. And yeah. that's the only thing you've been told to do is cold call the same 40 freaking realtors every Monday if you want to build your purchase business. Come on. Yeah. This is okay, practice builder. <laughs> Let's get with some 21st century technology. Let's not settle for the gardening trowel when there's something called an excavator. Yes. Oh, no brand yes. Point the bank for doing it the hard way. Yeah. So, yeah. So, obviously, some stark contrasts in paradigms, perspectives, and mindsets. Uh, the difference between the practice builder and the entrepreneur is a stark contrast indeed. What we want you guys to start to wrap your hearts and minds around is to own the fact that you can have it the way you want it. Yep. If you don't settle and own the fact that you're a thought evolved being that you create in your life, what you focus on and what you think about. And if you're constantly feeding the fire of lack, limitation, scarcity and not enoughness, not enough time, not enough bandwidth, not enough energy, not enough talent, not enough ability to attract the talent, not enough ability to keep the talent. Well, guess what? You're going to prove yourself right. That's the bottom line there. That's Every time. How, that's how powerful you guys are. That's a pow how powerful we are. God gave us the ability to think. We got to think strategically to be able to create what we want instead of reacting to circumstance and being at the effect of circumstance. You're either going to be at cause to create the circumstance you want, or you're going to be at the effect of whatever circumstances dictate you to think, and then you're going to perpetuate a downward spiral of more of the same. Either way, you're the cause, not the circumstance. You're the cause. That's what we want you guys to fully embrace. That's right. So let's talk about another topic, which is how to make the most of this boom. And obviously, we've been planting some seeds along the way. Uh, yeah. This conversation already. How do we make the most of this boom from an entrepreneurial perspective? What What are some of the uh, bullet points on the playbook for an entrepreneur who's really seizing the most, making the most of not only the refi opportunity, but also right. this opportunity, uh, not just in 18 months when rates go up, but more importantly, even now, how does someone embrace making the most of this mortgage gold rush? Yeah. Step one, ask yourself, what do you truly want? Is it growth and, and trajectory and more money? I mean, OK, fine. Is it maintain this level that that the boom has given you and expand you know, your, your time to, to spend on yourself, your family? That, that's another separate strategy. Uh, but but again, you got to start with the end state in mind. What do you want? Yeah. And not just down the line, but now. See, most people right. think they have to sacrifice what matters most to them, their health and their family and their loved ones for, yeah. what, for what matters least to them, which is, you know, a bunch of money they have no time to actually enjoy because they're so frazzled and freaking stressed <laughs> out. Right. But this is how people exactly. are, and, they, and, they, and then they it often takes train wrecks where they get cancer or they have sure. a heart attack or, you know, they, they get divorced because they've been neglecting all these things for so long. 
what if making the most of this boom was also yeah. making the most of your life now? What exactly. If, what if those two are inextricably linked that right. you can't make the most of this boom if you're settling for substandard health, substandard relationships, right. and a substandard experience of life, being stressed right. and burnt out all freaking day? What yep. if making the most of this boom and squeezes, uh, squeezing as much juice out of this fruit as possible is, it about, yep. is about you loving the journey now, Yep. experiencing yep. joy now, experiencing delight and peace and poise and power now yep embracing the adventure of life now making yep. meaningful deposits in your relationship bank account with your kids and your spouse and your you know team members now what if what if it was about you making the most of the moment now how does yep. that shift the paradigm no oh, completely so then step two is understanding whether you want more money or you want more time you're going to need more people if you want more freedom you're going to yep. need more people right if you hadn't noticed by now there is a shit ton of minutia that drains your battery maybe you right. can do it the question is should you be doing it does it charge you does it energize you does it liberate right. you does it make you feel like you're dancing in your strengths operating in your zone of genius does it yep. delight you and excite you? If the answer is no, then my question to you is, what's stopping you? Yeah. And chances are what's stopping you is these erroneous presuppos presuppositions and beliefs that you're not enough, that you can't do it, that you're too tired, that you're too burnt out, that you're too stressed out, that good people are hard to find, that good people are hard to keep, et cetera, yep. et cetera. You're going to have to fire them <laughs> when so the nice. market goes down. What if this is just a glaring opportunity where you've got this you know, proverbial two by four wrapped in velvet, smacking upside your forehead by God or the universe, trying to get your attention to have yep. you wake up to the fact that you can create it the way you want it. You don't have to be yep. a victim of the circumstance any longer. No, you don't have to play no. the, the practice mediocrity builder role. You can you can play the entrepreneur, create an abundant life role. You get to choose. Yeah. Hey, step uh, step three. Like uh, optimize what the market's giving you, right? So right now it's refi season. Do everything in your power to capture more refis, right? Yeah. And that's absolutely. going to require more people. However, yeah, you know, step four, efficiently manage your money. Like if you go out and you acquire all that new, you, you expand into refis, and 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 you think this this boom's going to last forever. So you go out and you buy that uh, that Bentley. You're going to have a bad time. Monthly payments. <laughs> right. All, all those doodads with monthly payments. Right. Every one of those monthly payments is another noose around yeah. your neck. Invest in assets. And your number one asset is yourself. Right. Yeah. What ben, ben Franklin said, the best return on investment you're going to ever get is knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> Pour your purse into your head. Yes. Yes, exactly. Nobody can take that from you. Yeah. Not <laughs> at the end of the day, here's the main premise. You can have more because you can become more. Exactly. You want to make a million dollars a year working 30 hours a week and have an epic life with right. fun and fulfillment and freedom and give your family a legendary legacy of not just more money, but more time and more magic moments. Right. In those magic moments in frequency and intensity. Like yep. if, that, if that's the legacy you want to create, if that's the life you want to live, guess what? The only thing stopping you from creating that life is you getting in the way of you. Right. It's right. The stinking thinking, the erroneous yep. beliefs, the misconceptions that keep you stuck in playing so small and playing safe. I've been there, too. I'm constantly bumping up against my own limitations. I'm right. constantly bumping up against my own fears, not being enough, not being good enough, wanting to play it safe. We just yeah. I mean, we just did a massive, massive pivot, pivot recently. We we've been spending literally twelve thousand dollars a month on ads. And all of a sudden they went to shit overnight and literally it's like all of a sudden everything that was working before just stopped working right and all of a sudden everything in me my humanity screaming out like what's wrong with me right what if this is the beginning of the end with for me what if this is that you know the moment at which i'm now shrinking into regression and i just crash and burn like all these human fears right yeah and so i had a choice to make in that moment do I play safe? Do I play small? Do I play the victim? Do I play the being at the effect of circumstance? Or do I decide to see it 
in a light that inspires me and empowers me and ignites me and it and and fires me up to embrace the adventure of this challenge. Yep. Yep. And so you guys know you got to be knowing if you've been tuning in to this channel for any period of time, this isn't just about us preaching this. What makes us impactful and transformational for our clients is that we freaking live it. Yep. So what happened is I had to decide to, to, to live what we've been preaching and teaching, which is what if this is an opportunity that God's been, you know, trying to get my attention on for quite some time, but I wasn't willing to hear it. So he had to grab the two by four and smack it upside <laughs> my forehead where we make some pivots where we can expand our contribution at a way higher level. Yeah, no, I mean, Dor, we, we, we went through the exact same mental process our, our audience is going through when uh, when I was screaming up and down like a little child that we needed to uh, get into the the, 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 the the contract processor game. And and we kept you know, buttoning into, well, you know, what if the regulations don't support it? Or, we don't know any. You know, I was getting in the way. I said, that's not my domain of expertise. So again, right. I'm not this builder mindset, right? I don't know how to do that. That's not my. We'll go get a lawyer. <laughs> I don't need to have that expertise. I can hire that expertise. Right. Right. <laughs> but none of us are processors. That's great. We'll go hire one. <laughs> the processor in me, or rather the, the, the <laughs> builder in me, was being my own bottleneck. I can't do right. that because I don't know that. I can't do that because that's not of my zone of genius. So I had to decide to shift channels to be the entrepreneur and say, wait a second. What yeah, wait. That's in my leadership. Where, what if this is where I bump up against my leadership lid and I decide, you know what? I'm not going to stop here. I'm going to grow nope. to become a better leader and I'm going to grow to trust my team. I'm going to grow to trust Lane and empower Lane. And all of a sudden, there's a whole new realm of opportunity there because I'm willing to let go and empower others and have other people shine so that you know i can do what i do best and get the best to do all the rest that's the entrepreneurial mindset friends so Great. if you guys are noticing this ain't easy welcome to the club we're we're getting our asses kicked in in different ways too but you know what the difference between the champion and the chump is the chump gets their ass kicked and they stay on the ground. The champion rises up just one more time. They get their ass kicked, they rise up one more time. They get their ass yeah. kicked, yeah, they rise up one more time. That's the that's how champions roll. Yeah. So how to make the most of this boom? Uh, you know, understand what you want, accept this isn't going to last forever, and start investing in ways to make your current level of production or to achieve what you want a reality even when interest rates spike. Because I mean, I'm not an economist, but I will tell you it'll happen in 18 to 36 months. Yeah. I mean, it's just a matter of time. You can't have the yep. flow forever without the ebb. You know, the ebb yep. and flow of life is a perennial constant. The question is not yep. if, just when. We all know that. The yep. question is, are you prepared and are you positioning yourself to prosper when it happens? Prosper exactly. now, but also prosper in the future. Yeah. So, no. And, and don't think you can pivot on a dime either. Your your business is, is like steering an aircraft carrier. You see the lighthouse heading your way. You need to start turning now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you don't want to wait till you're 20 yards away. That ain't going to cut it. That's no. a big crash. Yep. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so there's lots of tools in the toolbox to mine the gold from your database to maximize refis. But if you're screaming, I'm already 500% capacity, you're never going to squeeze enough on that fruit to to get capture that juice so there's right. a mindset blockade that we need to remove first before you can fully harness right. the refi well, boom. and same and thing with the purchase business the number one valid objection I've, I've heard come out of the group is lane you make this sound so easy uh yeah yeah to just to uh, you know, build capacity yeah i'm like okay fine yeah, look, it, it doesn't matter what the, if, if there are processors out there and 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 they cost a lot of money, then you need to know your own numbers and pay as much where marginal returns meet marginal cost, right? Where they're still profitable. If yeah. that's not an option for you or you just don't have the resources, then then you need to invest in understanding, okay, what makes a good loan processor and then develop the procedures to lower the bar in terms of the competency level that you can hire for that processor yeah, so that you can bring in more candidates. For like sure, McDonald's. everybody, what's like that? Donald's running a $40 billion operation worldwide off uh, you know, a bunch of pimple popping teenagers running right. operations. Right, this, this isn't an interest rate problem. This isn't 
a a a a a a resource problem in terms of of you know qualified labor this is is and will always be a process problem that is the missing piece to their puzzle period and a, and a mindset problem yep. yeah, that, yeah. You can hire yeah. if you don't believe you can attract and keep top talent you won't yeah just like henry said but what if these top talent processors aren't just looking for the best comp plan they're looking for the best winning environment environment yeah no sure. yeah uh, e eagles flock with eagles and if you're a yeah. shit show the all-stars aren't gonna want to hang out with you they've already got their <laughs> shit show where they're at now why would they bump ship from one shit show to another right right so, right you know what are you bringing energetically right in terms of monetary not just monetary compensation but energetic converse, uh, compensation right in terms of the culture in terms personal of the growth energy in terms of right. the leadership in terms of the personal growth how right are you helping them become the best version of themselves and how are you doing that in your own life because you can't give that what you don't have so mm -hmm. this is where leadership everything rises and falls on leadership yep. it has yesterday it will today and it will tomorrow so that's all we got for time today, guys. I wanna just wrap up by giving you an opportunity, as we always do, to get some help. Because if you're listening to this right now, you're like, Dorna Lane, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I, I totally feel like I'm getting in my own way. I'm my own bottleneck. Let some stinking thinking creep in that's having me play the victim role and be at the effect instead of being at the cause. I need some support and some guidance and some strategy around not only how to make the most of the refi boom, but more importantly, how to position myself to thrive in and out of refi booms, whether the rates are up or the rates are low, whether there's inventory up or inventory low. You want to be thriving in and out of any season. And if that's you and you know that if you keep doing it the way you've been doing it, you're going to keep getting it the way you've been getting it. And you're sick and tired of being in that paradigm of being at the effect of being at the cause and being stressed out and burnt out and frazzled and fried and coping and living life like that in stress mode. And you're ready to start thriving instead of just surviving, even though your bank account's stacking, you're not loving life because you're so freaking stressed out. If that's you and you're ready to start really thriving and leveling up your leadership and leveling up you being the best version of yourself and loving the journey, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call yep. where you get on the phone with Lane or myself or one of our team members. We lift up the hood on your business. We give you clarity like you've never gotten clarity before. Lucid clarity with accurate thinking as it relates to where you are now and where you wanna be. And if we can help you bridge that gap and go stratospheric and pour gasoline on the fire, by all means, we'll show you what that looks like and we'll show you how to do that. If not, we'll be the first people to advise, you know what, we're not the right fit, maybe recommend someone else or something else. But either way, you'll leave the call, friends. You will leave the call with more clarity than you ever have in your entire business bar freaking none. That's what we can guarantee. And chances are we'll have some fun along the way as well because that's how we roll. We like to have fun. So that being said, if you'd like to take advantage of that, I invite you to take advantage of it by booking the call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. The reason why it is apply is because we're seeing if we're a good fit to help you create that next level growth and expansion and abundance in your life. So it's an application process. You're going to check us out. We're going to check you out. Let's see if we have a fit. So again, if you want to explore possibilities for leverage and expansion in your life and your business, book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Lane, any uh, last words before we sign off today? Oh my gosh. Yeah, it, it, it all starts with your mindset. And 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 then from there, it's, it's asking the right questions to identify the right problem to solve. Absolutely. And it's about you guys realizing that you know, you are the source of your life. You're the source of your business. And there's a cap, there's a bottleneck to where we can go in isolation on our own. That's why the best of the best athletes of the world have the best of the best coaches. That's mm -hmm. why Tiger Woods literally has like, you know, five different coaches for five different areas of discipline from putting to driving to mindset and so on. So it's really mission critical, guys, that if you want to be peak performance and at the highest level, you get the best peak performance coaches in your corner. And that's yep. why people hire us. So if you'd like to yep. explore how we can help you do that and put fuel in your rocket, go to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. All right, guys, that's all we got for today. It's been a pleasure and a delight to hang with you just because I get to roll with uh, Lane and a little spontaneous uh, flapping of the lips for 45 minutes. That's <laughs> worth it just in and of itself. So, Lane, thanks for hanging with me, brother. That's been yeah, man. Be good.
All right, guys, Doran Aldana and Lane Boland with the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing and MortgageMarketingCoach.com. Be blessed, bring your best, and let the law of attraction take care of the rest, y'all. Have a good one. We'll talk to you soon. Peace. Adios.